Hey guys, it's Sarah here from Guardian Cane Corsos, and today we're going to be talking about my opinion. Ah, ah, ah! Good. The girls never stop. We're going to be talking about my opinion on the history of the Cane Corso. And I wanted to separate the two because while I think certain things may be considered factual, uh, I really don't have any proof of them. So today I wanted to do a video kind of on really spilling the tea of all the gossip, rumors, and stuff you'll hear about the Cane Corso history and my thoughts on them. Um, I'm going to do my best to try and keep it fair, unbiased, um, things like that. And I encourage you guys to do your research as well. Don't take my word for it. Chevy, uh-oh, good girl. I got eyes on the back of my head. Not really, <laughs> just a camera. Um, but yeah, we're gonna be talking about crosses. Was the Rottweiler bred into the Corso? Was the Boxer? We're gonna be talking about the founders and some sketchy rumors going on about them, whether they might be true or not. And we're going to be talking about a lot of other interesting things that I know a lot of people wonder, you know, and that is, you know, what's going on between America versus Italy? All of those details. This is strictly just a video on my opinion, okay? I could try and back these claims up. Uh, this is all hearsay. And in this day and age, you really can't trust someone. But when multiple people tell you the same things, you got to pay attention to it. So as much as I'm against uh, looking at things that are not facts uh, and are rumors or gossip, um, I do think it's important to discuss because we just don't know enough about the history of the Cane Corso. So that's what this video is about. Let's get into it. So first of all, the Connie Corso history video is the hardest video that I've ever made to date. Uh, I've put a lot of effort into getting over 200 photos and animating them into a slideshow using Adobe After Effects. And <laughs> the video is not done as well as I would have hoped for all the time and effort that has gone into it, but it literally took me over 100 hours. So it is what it is. Um, the people want to see what the people want to see. And the history of the Cane Corso is not all that sexy. Um, and neither is some of the opinions on it. And we're going to break it down today um, on possibly what is happening with the breed. Right, Logan? Yeah. All right. So one of you guys requested that we do a Mastiff type video very similar to the Corso history video. So that is on my to-do list, but given the amount of time and effort this type of video takes, I'm going to plan that one for a month or two out just to give myself some time to recover uh, because I did get some complaints on, why are you obsessing on your YouTube channel? Don't you care about our family? So got to keep putting the family first, folks. But I am going to do one on the Mastiff history as well as put some pictures in on some older breeds like the boxer because if you haven't seen an old school boxer I guarantee you some of you would actually think it's a corso so that gives us some insights into the history of our breed and why some people may have mixed boxers in the old school boxer very very similar to a corso could it even have been the same breed I don't know but we will find out in that video coming out in the next two months also of note was I have pronounced two things wrong um, in my history videos. The first one was Mike Sottle. His actual last name pronunciation is Mike Satilli. So it is the Italian pronunciation. Just wanted you guys to all be aware. Uh, lastly, the uh, lines I kept calling Cerebris, they are Cerberus. So I did pronounce that wrong. I'm correcting it here so we can all get it right going forward. Another interesting point is there really isn't a lot of information on the breed at all 
beyond the 1900s. And that is because, as we know in the video, you know, there was apparently a Neo, you know, the, the Brittany, and then there was apparently the Corso, which is the Pugnes. Um, but when you look back, there is no history really factually saying that those two dogs were in the Roman Wars. There's some artifacts that I showed you guys, some early literature, um, but there's no pictures of the dogs really to show anything. And in the 1800s, they did have uh, cameras, I believe. Guys, fact check me on that one, because that could be fake news, but you know, they, they did have drawings and paintings and such and other breeds date back particularly uh, far. So if they do, why not the Corso? And so I think the earliest real picture I could find is what they call the Mastino in the 1920s. But, you know, for a Mastino, is there really a difference between the Neo and the Corso? That's something that I wonder. Um, a lot of people say that there is two types of the Mastiffs and the Molossoid dogs, you know, but I'm not sure. Um, we do know that people bred dogs for function and they didn't breed them for breed types. So in my opinion, was there really a different dog for Mastiffs and Corsos? Maybe, but not really. Okay, so the wars happen way, way back. I'm not a history buff, so I don't even know what era the Roman wars happened, except it was, you know, before Jesus' time, if you believe uh, in the Bible or Jesus. Um, so that puts it over, you know, 2,200 years ago, I would say. So, you know, that's a long time, and we have seen what we have done to dogs since joining the AKC, okay? They have changed in 50 to 100 years, and we're talking 20 times that at least. So, you know, chances are what we see today is not very similar to what it was like before, but there is a molossoid type of dog. It is depicted in Egyptian hieroglyphics, in Roman, um, you know, drawings, things like that. The Assyrian times, we know that the Assyrians had this great dog, okay? And another important thing to note is the Neo looks nothing like it does now. It actually really looks like the Corso pictures and I can play a game with you guys if you're interested and it will be in the Mastiff History video of is this a Neo or a Corso? And you would be surprised because even I got some wrong um, when I was looking at photos, you know, for Corsos. You have arguments happening in Facebook. You know, is this, the, here's a Corso. Well, it absolutely looks like a Corso. Chevy? Oh, good job, girls. Come on. Come. Good. Good girl. Good girl. Yes, yeah, Chevy is my favorite. She's always listening. She's always listening. Good girl. Girl. All right. So, yeah. You, you would would be surprised. So according to those pictures, if a Neo back in the day looks like a Corso, is there really a difference? What I think is whatever the dogs were used for as function, you know, should determine how they were bred. So if you had, you know, two farm dogs and you, you wanted to make a guard dog and a, a better herding dog, and you were in Italy, you might have bred the Abruzzi sheep dog to the Mastiff, okay? The Italian Mastiff, Molossoid, Mastino, whatever you want to call it. Hey! Chevy, Phoenix, 
Knock it off. Chevy. Uh-oh. Cut it out. Good girl, Phoenix. Good girl. So, I personally think they were all the same dog, and depending what region they were in, they turned out differently. And depending what farmer they were with, they turned out differently. You know, for the various jobs that they were used to do. Because, as we've seen in America, people like certain dogs a certain way. People here like huge corsos. The breed standard is actually 20 to 50 pounds less originally than what you're seeing today in the show rings. But, you know, we're not doing anything to stop it. People want big, intimidating dogs. We have large food portions here. We like everything super sized. So that's basically what's happening to the Corso here. And it's only been here since 1988. Okay? So 32 years. Um, and even at that, not a whole bunch <coughs> happened in the first three, four years as they were importing some over. Okay, so that's what you need to know is that probably the same dog. Yes, the Neo took on a very distinct, more distinct look after the 1950s. And we do know the Neo came to America before the Conic Corso. But was it the same dog? Quite possibly. Are they the same dog today? No. Okay, so that's my opinion and the tea spilled on the Neo versus the Corso. And I don't know what happened, where in the world it happened, because I don't follow Neos as much. But the Neos are way different than what they were. And if you look back at some of the rare dog breed show events in America, it's very clear to see that the Neo didn't come that much sooner uh, than the Corso, and they look completely different uh, than they used to. So whether that was possible from evolution, my opinion says no. I think they were crossbred. Speaking of crossbreeds, we know for sure uh, that the Corso was crossed, okay? Back in the day, crossing didn't matter. You know, purebred wasn't a thing. So, you know, at the end of the day, why are we fighting over this? You know, there was a uh, restoration efforts. The Italians swear up and down that they didn't crossbreed the dogs. And the dogs were in Italy. So they had a lot more opportunity to find some. And they spent a good chunk of time looking for dogs. Um, so is it possible that they're telling the truth? Yeah. You know, I definitely don't doubt it. I definitely think it's possible that they are not uh, lying and they didn't cross anything, but were there original Corsos, Corsos, you know, who knows? They had a look and a type and that's where they stand. And some of the markings that you'll see, and I was corrected, that Plude had was black with brindle markings, but you don't see that look anymore at all. So. You know, there, there's a whole controversy around black and tan. And everyone I spoke to has said that they have seen black and tan come out in litters in Italy, okay, from their connections. And this is such a controversy that people actually cull their dogs. Do you guys know what culling is? Culling is where you actually take your dog, sorry, mosquito, and you kill them after they were born because they're not to the breed type. That way nobody knows that you ever had that puppy. You drown it, you do whatever. I don't even wanna know how it's done. But is it that serious, guys? Do we really need to kill off these puppies? Yeah, sure, we don't give them papers, which I was also corrected, it's called a soft cull. Yeah, that's normal. Some litters will have show dogs that should be bred and they'll have dogs that just know this this one dog is not what we're looking for so no this is a companion and sorry you know you don't while you are purebred you don't have the right to, to breed the dog 
And that's the uh, interesting thing about backyard breeders is are they really being responsible with who they give papers out to? So every single breeder carries the weight of the future of the breed on their shoulders by deciding who is allowed to have a registered dog with breeding rights because you can't really stop people from doing stuff but at least they won't be able to sell these paper dogs. I've also spoken to people who have told me that you know say I have a litter and uh, you know there's no delay for how long you can register your dogs. I could register one once they're two years old I just have to pay a fee um, but you know if I take one of my extra litters, say for a puppy that passed away, um, and I give it to somebody else, they're able to register their dog under me. So some people are thought to be fudging paperwork um, and allowing more dogs into the AKC that were not around in open stud book uh, just so they, they can have paper dogs in America, you know? It is what it is. Um, it's not impossible to do. Um, the good thing is there is a control done by the AKC where they, you know, depending how many puppies you have uh, registered to a sire, they will DNA test the sire. But, you know, they're not DNA testing every puppy. So, yeah, is it possible to fudge paperwork? Absolutely. You know, um, it'd be interesting to have data on how many puppies are registered to each breeder a year so we can actually find out who is doing that because uh, multiple people I speak to say that that's true, but it's very hard to have evidence and call somebody out on that the absolute highest standard of what you should be looking for here in the US is AKC registered. But even then, it doesn't guarantee you <laughs> that you have a purebred Corso. Yeah, not cool. So definitely, in my opinion, Corsos have been crossed out with other breeds, whether it's for right reasons or wrong reasons. I will be doing a video later on on why you should not cross the Corso and I hope it gives you guys food for thought because in this last week alone I've seen three Corso litters mixed with pit bulls and a variety of other breeds and you know to me that's very irresponsible and I'll tell you guys why in that upcoming video so if that's something that you're interested in definitely hit subscribe um, to this channel and if you want to know whenever we launch a video, hit that notification bell. If not, leave it alone. One other thing I wanted to talk about is what happened to all the original puppies. Well, in talking to some people that were around in those days, um, they had some major health issues. They didn't come out good. Um, you know, so there was no point in showing them and they were you know, given off to other people, um, and, and there may have been some good ones, and they just had them as a pet. They never bothered to show them, and that happens to the best of us because showing is a lot of work. It's also important to understand that the first group of dogs that came over had horrendous hits very early on. Um, so, that could be why maybe our lines don't have great averages for hips. Um, you know, is it genetic? Is it environmental? We know out of the original litter, there was possibly, um, I've heard 14, I've heard 16, a lot of puppies, a giant litter. And out of those, there was only six that were able to show, you know, so that's only a third of the litter. That's telling me likely genetics were an issue. What do you guys think? Let me know. And, you know, 
in every litter you have good and bad, but if majority of the litter has bad hips or dysplasia or an issue, is it really good breeding stock? And a lot of those dogs founded the breed here in America, which could be why practically half the people I know on Instagram all have torn ACLs, um, elbow issues, hip dysplasia, a lot, a lot of joint issues in this breed. And I think it's very telling. I don't know anything about the Italian lines or other lines around the world if they also share this issue, but it's definitely a problem over here. Just like we see on Facebook today, breeder at each other's throats. Um, you will see that going as far back as the beginning. There is no disputing that Mike Satile, and sorry for pronouncing it wrong before, a saddle. Mike Satili had the first imports of what resembled the Corso into the US. He is definitely the godfather of the Connie Corso. However, he chose to really push his own breed registry, the FIC, not to, com not to be confused with the FCI, which is the Global International Worldwide Dog Registry. But, you know, he was the original person who brought the dogs over and, you know, continued to go back to Italy year over year. And he was also heavily involved with the Mastiffs. You know, so did he know his stuff? Yeah, I think so, um, to a good degree. Um, you know, he was definitely involved with dogs for years. And, you know, his father and probably even, I think, his grandfather was involved with dogs and who knows beyond that. Um, the Hodises who also came in, um, they are still involved with the breed today. They had a run to have a position on the AKC Corso Club, the Connie Corso Association of America in 2019's elections. Um, I don't believe um, Ed was voted in, but I have to go back and check. Um, but he's still very much involved and he still runs the ICCF. Now the ICCF was originally accepted by the AKC club for allowing Corsos to be registered there to come into the AKC, but the AKC has taken that privilege away. Why? AKC probably wants to be the only registry for Corsos, you know, but is there a question on the quality of dogs that are just ICCF registered? Possibly. You know, would love your guys' thoughts about that in the comments below. But just because you have an ICCF registered dog does not mean it can be registered with AKC. And to some people, it doesn't matter. Um, so if you're only looking for a companion dog, you don't care if your Corso is purebred, um, ICCF is fine. Um, and just as late as 2019, they have specialty shows and Corso events, you know, similar to what the AKC does. Um, assuming 2020 got canceled because of COVID, but you know, they're absolutely still running today. Um, if you do have an ICCF registered dog, you have access to some events, likely not as much as the AKC. One other interesting piece of information that I came across is the various original breeders' histories. Um, I'm not going to slander them on here because these are just opinions um, versus facts. But they are well known among the Corso community if you talk to anyone who's been around for over 20 years. The history of some of the founders is very, um, interesting. So we know that in their professional life they were caught for being dishonest. Um, in their, uh, history they originally started off in fighting, boxing. So if you could think of Italian stereotypes as a fellow Italian, you know, and the mafia and whatever happened in the early days, 
kind of hits home in the course of the world. So do your research, talk to some people. Um, I definitely don't want to defame anyone, so that is just uh, people's opinions of what's been shared with me. But I think it's important to note that in the history to help make sense of some things when you're looking back. All right, Italy versus America. The story here is that, you know, the Corso restoration was happening in Italy, but America's love for the breed, you know, given our population and our wealth is what really spiked its popularity. So when America became interested in it, you know, people could import dogs here for thousands of dollars. Um, whereas before, I'm not sure what they would have been sold for. Um, if I can, I'm trying to get in touch with some of my family um, that still live in Puglia in Italy to see if they can remember anything from the good old days of, you know, what it cost them to get a farm dog because my family grew up in uh, Orchinova, Italy on farms. And I believe we still have an olive uh, farm today. So um, I was just there in 2009 but I didn't know about the course of that. So that shows you how new I am to the breed. But um, yeah, everything comes down to money. So they say that the Italians didn't like what the Americans were doing and claiming that we had our own line when it originally um, came from Sicily and it was the Branchiro. Are they the same dog? Probably, probably just another form in a geographic location. Um, you know, we had a nanny over from Italy and she's like, oh, Messino. She didn't call it a Cane Corso. And she was from very uh, Northern Italy. So just goes to show that there is a lot of tension that was there between America and the US, or, um, probably yeah, some things to do over money. Probably uh, America's claim on this dog when really it is an Italian breed. But from everything that I'm seeing, the Italians are not bad, okay? Uh, and I'm not just saying that because that's my heritage, but they literally get out measuring tapes, look at angles. You know, when they brought the Corsos um, into the ENCI, they actually followed up on the standard and made sure that it's, you know, actually looking like what they put uh, there. Now there is some controversy on their most recent change. I don't know enough about it to get into it. Um, but do I think the rumor that the Italians started about the Americans is true? Where we created a breed by mixing Neos and Rottweilers? No, I actually think that is false. Um, I do think the original Corsos in America from Sicily were imported from there. So lots of rumors on both sides. Um, it's a shame. And you know, I'm going to be doing a video very, very soon on the Cane Corso Association of America because votes matter just like it does in our U.S. presidential elections. And if you're sick and tired as a new person, of being told, oh, your dogs suck, you don't know what you're doing, that's not a Corso, you know, and you're trying to learn, share things, and all people do is put you down, I will show you that if we join together and join the CCAA, we actually have the opportunity to change things for this breed. I absolutely, as a new person, feel um, many of the top breeders are not helpful. Uh, they're protecting their profits, which is strange because so many people want a Corso. There's not enough puppies for the demand. So do we need to be fighting? No. You know, should we be teaching and educating people? Yeah. So I am going to actually show you guys how we can take action as newer people to get our voices finally heard and ensure that it's not just about money and these large old school volume breeders who do know the breed very well and we would like to still have them around but you know if you join the CCA and you listen to the recent tapes 
there is some <laughs> scandalous, salacious things happening on those board meetings. So I will uh, track some of that down and play it for you guys in an upcoming video because I really would like to see you guys vote and join and be a part of the voice on the, the group that decides the fate of this breed. And you have me standing behind you and some others. It's too, it's been going on too long. We need to stop pushing the good people out. Most people who do things the right way know that this breed makes you no money. And I will do in a couple weeks all the episodes on finances. I'll show you guys all my receipts that I've spent on my dogs and my first litter. So you guys can have a heads up before you think you want to get involved in this breed. But yeah, that's basically uh, spilling the tea. If you guys have any other questions, let me know in the comments. I will be answering them. But the breed is not as sexy as you imagine. Yes, do I love Corsos? 100%. Do I think they're beautiful, stunning dogs with a presence? Yes. Such great temperaments as well. But, you know, did they come from a special line? No, probably not. Were they war Roman war dogs? We don't know. We do know that they grew up on Italian farms and they were very versatile in all the roles that they could play and they were very close with their family. Um, so yeah, that's all we know. Um, anything else? Frankly, even if it is written in history, there is very little proof um, other than somebody writing a book. I can write a book doesn't mean that it's a fact okay so just wanted to bring all of that information to you guys attention um, probably got 10 mosquito bites in making this video so and it's already way too long but I just wanted to have a heart to heart with you guys and let you know my opinion making this video nearly killed me it was devastating it was so heavy it was hard news because I really assumed that there'd be a lot more good stuff available and there just isn't. And nobody's sharing things. Everyone's bringing each other down. You know, but it is what it is. And the only way we can create change is by joining the Breed Club and, and demanding it with our votes on who we'll vote for. So that's it. I'm signing off. As always, you guys, I appreciate always if you can put a thumbs up on this video and any comment below so I know that you're watching because um, I miss some of you guys some of you guys comment and then I don't hear from you and then I worry about you guys I know some of you guys have been in and out of the hospital so definitely just put a little smiley face so I know that you're alive and watching um, but stay safe stay blessed and we'll have another video coming out soon